But as for me, I really never even imagined that I could play pro basketball. It was not in my mind. I was satisfied with just making the high school team and really not going any further. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, nobody was there to motivate me. My father had passed. And only my little brother came to my games. I wasn't really anyone there to say, well, look, you can go to the next level. I learned how to play basketball by myself, you know, by going out in the backyard and 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 I really liked it because I saw my, which became my brother-in-law, he wasn't at the time, play basketball and he was a really good shooter. And I watched him play and I said, oh man, I like that, I would like to be like that one day being able to uh, shoot like that. And so I got into uh, basketball and I just practiced and practiced and practiced until I became a good shooter myself. Do you, do you think that if you had that, that more structured, like molding and guidance is possible, that would increase your chances of taking sports to a whole nother level? Absolutely. Absolutely, I do think so. Uh, that always helped. It's not a guarantee that you will go, but you'll be the best that you can be. You know what I'm saying? And you would not uh, uh, just be satisfied with where you are. There's another voice in your ear trying to propel you to the next level. I never thought about next level. I was pretty much satisfied with where I was because I was one of the best at that level, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah. But you would have definitely maxed out. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll max out if you got somebody there pushing you and guiding you and giving you instructions on the things that you do not know. You know, you can learn a lot by yourself, but you can learn more when somebody else who is experienced in that area would uh, propel you to I the believe next level. that. That is so true. That yeah. is so true. I see that in yeah. my own life. Yeah. yeah. So, like, moving forward, like, as we progress, like, through high school, at what point did you decide um, going to college was something that you wanted to do? And like, how did you, did you, did you go about getting there? I didn't decide. I did not decide to go to college and neither did I go to college right out of high school. Okay. I worked a job. I got out and I worked scat tapping at uh, Bird, Field at the time, Bird Airport. I'm not familiar with that. Which is now Richmond International. It was a small little airport, which has grown tremendously, uh, and is now an international airport. But Still back, smaller than many of the airports around the uh, country. Uh, yeah. However, it is a heck of a lot bigger than it was. I, I, I saw that. it when it was absolutely almost nothing, you know. That's amazing. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. And um, from there, I was, I said, look, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And I hear that if you get a better education, that you could land better jobs and so I decided to uh, go to Virginia Commonwealth University. I had to take some uh, prep classes in the beginning mm -hmm. to get me up to par 
in which I took and got up there. And I did not graduate from, from college. I didn't graduate from DCU. I uh, got as far as a junior. Okay. And decided it was better for me to get out there. Well, I and and we just work. I understand. You know, and I could bring in more money, and it was uh, bring in some tax. bacon. Yeah, and uh, so I did. But that was where I met my wife, uh, which is currently my wife. You know, um, we were in English class together. Uh, I guess you heard us say that uh, I used to come into class and saw her beautiful big legs and <laughs> the world they heard. It. I heard it. the world they heard. It. <laughs> uh, decided to haul <laughs> to give her a shout out, and uh, we didn't hit it off immediately. But later on, we. Uh, saw each other after that, after college, and got together. Wow, no, I never knew that. I always thought you guys, like, you yeah. know, met in college, maybe holding hands, walking to the dorm oh, or no. whatever. <laughs> I mean, just, that's what I always saw, but that's not yeah. what happened. Yeah. I do yeah. have a question while, while we there. Was it, was it any, like, favorite classes or subjects you had while, while you was in college or any good experiences you could talk about that stand out to you? Um, like, did you take a business class in college? Yeah, I took business classes, uh, but I wasn't a business major. Okay, I mean, you know, I took maybe one business class. My direction was um, cor corrections. I and, didn't. I would have never known. Yeah, it was uh, more like um, trying to help juveniles and and kids uh, propel to the next level because I did actually work in that uh, area. You worked in juvenile corrections? I worked in juvenile corrections. I worked there in it for four years. And I moved from... Uh, can, you, can you tell the people how you got in it, like initially, into juvenile corrections? I, I was looking for a new job when I was working as a um, sky cap at, uh, at Bird, Bird International. Were Bird Airport. Okay. And I applied for a job at Hanover Juvenile Correctional Institution. And I got the job. I started out in a unit uh, with no training. They didn't even train you. They hired you and they put you to work. Just like that. Just like that. They hired me one day and the next day I was in a cottage. That's what they call the units. Oh, man. By myself with 30 kids, 30 kids, 30 juvenile boys. All with different stories, different things that, that they need to work out. Yeah. Wow. And they were some of the most difficult young men on campus it what? was it, you had various cottages out there okay it was eight cottages and they had uh students i guess you could call them in each of these cottages they had a runaway cottage that was people who were flight risk they you know had the ability to run from the campus and get back into the mainstream of society before their time. Did they try? Yes. Did they by any chance take their like shoestrings and stuff like that at the mm -hmm. runaway college? Well, I can tell you one that I experienced. Okay. A young man told me he needed to use the bathroom. 
And I had uh, more than him, maybe about 10 boys out. And I went with him while another supervisor um, watched the other nine. And while we were in the bathroom, I decided to use the bathroom <laughs> at the same time he did. And when he saw me using the bathroom, he ran out of the door, bam, and hit the woods. And I never did see him again. They found him in Florida. I almost lost my job because of that. Wow, he has a connection. Yeah. He didn't get in the car. Yeah, he got, he, once they get off campus, you know, anything is game. They could steal, they could um, hurt somebody, anything could happen because they were incarcerated. Wow. Yeah. So, That's amazing. That totally related. I just remember in the military, some people live closer to the base and um, some of them used to run away. Mm -hmm. Well, in basic training, I mean, they used to run away and mm -hmm. they they had a way of dealing with them, like taking things and taking shoestrings mm -hmm. and shoes, you know. Yeah. But once they come back, they get locked away in, in which was G Cottage. That's a high security cottage. Wherein you can't come outside. You're just in there. Everything is brought to you. Wow. Because you are flight risk, you know. And... Uh, they stayed in there for a certain length of time until they could, you know, we like, felt comfortable that they would were no longer a flight risk. They get a few. And that could have been, you know, forever. Wow. For their duration there. Wow. Yeah.